It's five minutes with me. Hey, hey, welcome to five minutes with Marco. Hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving. If you're listening to this just in the days following that glorious uh, time of family and friends and food, the three apps. Now, today I want to briefly uh, talk to you about the Ten Commandments of Discipling Others. I had a youth worker buddy for years named Paul Martin, who was really one of the smartest and most thoughtful youth workers you've never heard of. And part of the reason you've never heard of him is that he didn't self-promote or jockey for exposure. He had a blog that was really worth reading back in the day. He's an outside-the-box thinker who was seriously worth following. He posted something years ago that I copied into a file and saved on my computer. I've looked at it every few years, mostly as a reminder to myself. You might know that I've been a volunteer in the middle school ministry at my church for 25 years, and I'm currently leading a seventh grade guys small group. And while some aspects of the sort of engagement I hope to have with my guys has gotten easier over the years, like it's easier for me to customize the just okay curriculum I'm given and make it work for my guys. But other aspects of discipleship are just as hard or ever, maybe as hard as ever, or maybe even more so, particularly as I approach being so freaking old. In fact, sidebar, my guys refer to me as the world's oldest middle schooler, which I'm choosing to take as a compliment. Anyhow, my the article my youth worker friend uh, posted a bunch of years ago, passed by my radar again the other day as I was looking for a file. And I read it again, thinking about my practice of discipling about six or eight seventh grade boys. And I'd like to read it to you with thanks to Paul. Paul Martin, that is, not the Apostle Paul. The article was called The Ten Commandments of Discipleship, uh, and they do not only apply to middle school ministry or even only to youth ministry. One, thou, thou shalt not bring thy own self into the relationship and make everything about you. So many times I see people do this and do it myself. Something the person I'm discipling says triggers something I remember about my own life. It's okay to share a story, but this can get out of hand quickly. Commandment number two, thou shalt come prepared. Arrive early, having prayed, being to the best of your ability, spiritually nourished and emotionally stable. Everyone has bad weeks, but that should be the occasional occurrence, not the norm. Commandment number three, thou shalt wait. Don't come into the meeting time with lots to say before you even make eye contact. Things may have changed since the last meeting, or you might just need to listen. Don't start blazing with your agenda and plans. Commandment number four, thou shalt not wait. Don't be afraid to jump into a, situ a situation that needs clarity, needs interrupting, or needs your help. You've been invited into that if you're in a discipleship relationship. Don't flinch. Commandment number five, thou shalt not make this into therapy. Discipleship, though it may look like it at times, is not therapy. The best counselor that should show up is God's counsel. Commandment number six, thou shalt not call out every problem you see. Often there are lots of issues going on all at once. It's like, Golf, you can't focus on your grip and your stance and the position of your arm and your backswing and your head and your eye contact and all of the other minutia at the same time. Don't er overburden disciples with, what, uh, with all that they need to work on. Get them going on one thing or two. Commandment number seven, thou shalt not condemn when you don't see the progress you wished for. It's not fair or helpful to show too much disappointment in someone's working through their problems. They know they didn't measure up this week. They just need safety and support, and they came to you for it. Commandment number eight, thou shalt not micromanage. Too many suggested solutions create codependence and enabling behavior. It feels good to be needed, but don't cave to giving all the solutions. Let your disciples start coming up with their own solutions. Commandment number nine, thou shalt always challenge and affirm. One of these is completely ineffective without the other. 
both need to be present for a consistent movement forward. And commandment number 10, thou shalt have faith in God to do the work you can't. You can't make the real changes. That's God's realm. Be faithful to what you're called to. Don't try to be God and don't take credit for God's work. Just be faithful. The Youth Cartel Podcast Network.